live in three, two, go. Good morning, world. Good morning. Today is Money Monday, and Giovanni and I are here in the absence of our regular hosts for Money Monday, Ms. Kimberly and Mr. Zach Odie. We're beginning today today with a question for Giovanni. Giovanni, good morning. Good morning. Come on, man. You got to laugh out loud now. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. What's the question? You ready? I've got a question for you, Giovanni. Pretend I'm you and you're Maya, okay? okay. Jill, how is the moon like a dollar? How is the moon like a dollar? I have no idea. They both have four quarters. Four quarters? <laughs> <laughs> it is terrible. <laughs> I warned you. I warned you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you here. Welcome home, Andrea. Good morning, Chase. Good morning. Rashida, it's great to see you. If you're watching us on Facebook, we've got a phenomenal conversation for you. Giovanni and I have had uh, the honor of taking on a special task from Zach and Kimberly Odie. You know, Zach and Kimberly come on on Monday and they're teaching you everything about how to get your money to work for you. And you and I were thinking, gosh, you know, if you're going to have money work for you, you must first have money. <laughs> so today's conversation is all about freeing you, unleashing you to make the income of your dream. But before we go there, Andrea, good morning. How are you? Sorel, I am the way I say I am. And today I am what, what am I? How am I? I feel like constructed. I'm constructing things. So I'm a builder. That's what you I are a builder. Yep. <laughs> you know, my, 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 my last son, we used to call him Bob the Builder. Remember that character? Absolutely. Bob the Builder. That's you That's today. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Well, good morning, Andrea. Welcome. Chase, tell me. Where are you and who will you be hugging today? I am right here in the now. Who will I be hugging today? That's a great question. So I'm going to start with myself, just get that done. And I will, uh, whoever is in my path today that needs a hug, I'll give it to them. Mm, you are the one who spreads love on the planet. Yes. And that's how it's done. Yes, sir. So good morning, Chase, and welcome, Giovanni. Before I kick it over to you, brother, I have this question for you. What time is it? And what are you grateful for? Sorrel, um, let me check. The time is now. And um, what am I grateful for today? Today, I am grateful for clothes. Today, I'm grateful for clothes. Like the jacket you have on? Like the jacket I have on and the socks. It's, it's just lovely, man. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. And, clothes. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the question we created. The question is how to raise your minimum standards to create the income you want. And uh, so in this conversation, Giovanni and I were talking yesterday, and I realized for myself in the conversation, that for a long time, there was the money I was making and the money I wanted to make. And the money I wanted to make took however long it took to match up to the money I want. But until I discovered for myself what it is that's keeping the money I want to make, 
so far from the money I'm making today. And so in this question and considering this question, Giovanni and I came up with this conversation for you. So Gio, what's the first question we want to ask ourselves and the people listening? Yes. ends up this conversation. Yes, uh, uh, Sorrel, as you know, uh, I am very passionate about talking about making money and, and because um, I, I believe that um, most people are really good people. They don't have the resources to express who they are. They, they, they're kind of having to deal with the constraints of money for most people. And, um, and so I'm, I'm passionate about supporting people to make money. But also, I want to say before we dive in, is that money is a conversation that a lot of times is tied with self-worth. Like the more money you have, the better human being you are. And for me, um, it, there's just not a connection. There's not a direct correlation. They're like neighbors. Sometimes they meet, you know, <laughs> like sometimes <laughs> self-worth and having, a, you know, like a great human being and having a lot of money, sometimes they meet. But for the most part, um, they're separate. They're really, really separate. And and that's why in the in the daily huddle we have five different pillars, right? And and one of them is your finances. And, and but it doesn't make you a better human being to have more money. It doesn't make you less to have less money. And and for a long time I correlated my self worth with my bank account. And that um, that couldn't be that that would be another maybe an, another episode for the for the daily hot you know like, like 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 monica would say maybe another sermon for another monday uh you know gino i hear in what you're saying an invitation to the world an invitation to you and to me to to disabuse myself of the notion that the amount of money i have in the bank defines me the amount of money i have in the bank uh, gets to tell me uh, what I can do and what I can't do, who I can be with, who I can't be with, uh, how I should feel about myself, whether I should feel good about myself. Uh, now, yeah. while that's all well and good, I'm looking internally and I'm saying, gosh, you know what? For a long time, absent this conversation, it was real for me that the amount of money I had in the bank uh, was a reflection, if not a definition of who I am for the world. And that if the world knew how much money I had in the bank, uh, they'd know who I am. And therefore, I keep money private for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so we're going to put that on the side yeah. while we have this conversation, right? So this conversation is going to point to, for those of you that are listening on Facebook or you're on the podcast, and if I ask this question, raise your hand if you want to make more money, you're like, I do. I want to make more money. So this conversation is for the opportunity of that goal, not for the opportunity of to be more. That's a different, different kind of human being, different kind of question. So let's look at this possibility of making more money. The first thing that we talked about yesterday with Sorel was in a in a kind of a we were sort of reflecting what was the what was the very what would be the one thing we can point to that really began to move the needle in a new direction to make more money and and I know some of you have heard this before but we really invite you to see it to hear as if it was the first time we want you to consider that the amount of money that you have, that right now you make and that you have, is your minimum standards. Like people, you and I don't reach our highest potential. We reach our minimum standards. And, and if you don't confront yourself with that, if you don't make yourself wrong for that, but you just kind of look, how much money do I have in my bank account? Or how much money do I make? And how much money do I make a month? Oh, huh. Maybe I am making that every month because that's my minimum standards, not my highest potential. Because you'll notice that whenever you make less, whenever your savings account goes below that number, you know, whatever that is for you, $500, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, $100,000, whenever your bank account goes below that, you go to work. You're like, I need to go back to work. I cannot let money go below that point. So you and I sort of kind of reach our minimum standards. And that can be really liberating 
or really confronting, <laughs> given that, you know, the brain is really good at surviving the environment it's in, you know? So maybe for some of you, my minimum standards is to make us to have in my bank account $20,000. That's my minimum standard. And to make $100,000 a year, that's my minimum standard. Or for some of you, it's $50,000. And or for some of you, it's $20,000. For some of you, being broke is your minimum standard. I can survive being broke. It's okay. It's my minimum yeah. standard. Go ahead, Zorro. Uh, I, I can also see for myself how I have reverse engineered what I would accept as money and payment for the work I, I've done. Uh, you know, back in back in back in high school or back in college, it would go like this: reverse engineered, right? Uh, this is how much money I need for food. This is how much money I need for utilities. This is how much money I need for that. Therefore, I'm not going to take a job that offers me any less than that. And I never related to that as the minimum standard. And that's what we're talking about: that minimum standard that leaves me in a place where I'm comfortable surviving dictates how much money I accept, dictates how much money I make. And man, whenever the amount of money goes below that, I'm in crazy action. So to actually get to the income I want, I have to first confront that I have this minimum standard. Yeah. And it's quite confronting. It certainly was for me. Um, at some point, I was uh, working at a, a corporation in a major American company, uh, what we usually call corporate America. And um, and I just, you know, it was, it, it at the time, for me, that was my best. That was the best I could do, you know? So, like, I had already go to school. I, I mean, I sold newspapers at traffic lights for crying out loud. I was at corporate America on a pathway to being a manager, you know? So when somebody said, Gio, you know, the money you make are your minimum standards. You could make more. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I was like, this is my best, man. Leave me alone. I'm in the right track. <laughs> I don't want to think about making my money. This is my best. And sometimes... Sometimes we can't quite recognize the ceiling we, we have put upon ourselves for the possibility of our lives. Sometimes we can't really recognize it. Somebody else can recognize it for you. But if they say it, then it's more like, uh, are you saying I'm not enough? No, that has nothing to do with it. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's just that I've reached the minimum standards that I am willing to receive from the world. You know, the world is, is trafficking in trillions of dollars every year. How much are you willing to have it come your way? Would you allow it to have more your way? Would you, would you open yourselves to have more your way? Consider, we want you to consider that you don't want to. If you are in the pathway that you want to make a little bit more. If you're not in the pathway, then this is a cool conversation. But if you are in the pathway, if you want to make a little bit more, consider that you are closing yourself for the possibility of more because you have reached your minimum standards, right? And, okay. and, and to begin to like break through that ceiling, there's the question you want to ask yourself and you want to answer. Uh, as you're answering the question, you actually have to look and make sure your minimum standards is not answering the question. And the question is this, what is your dream income? You know, research shows that uh, less than 2%, less, less than 2% of people make over 250K a year. And you could say that even that 2% is operating inside of their minimum standard. So the question to you now, and you don't have to say it out loud, but just look for yourself. What is your dream income? And the next phase of this conversation is, if that's your dream income, and it's different from your minimum standard, how do you break through the ceiling and get there? Yeah, yeah. I remember when I met my, one of my first men, financial mentors, Sorrell, and I always love sharing this story. 
is that I was re I was working for corporate America and I was uh, maybe making around forty five thousand and that I was as you know I was as happy as you could get. Now I can have a house. Now I can eat appetizers. Now I can go to the <laughs> movies in the same month. You know, <laughs> it was a big deal. And I went to uh, I went to a meeting and his name is Jeff. I talk about him all the time and he said. Oh, Gio, et cetera, et cetera. He said, um, you know, you should consider working with us, but there's only one condition. The minimum wage here is 100000 The minimum wage here is $100,000. So if you want to work here, you have to have that to be your minimum wage. I could not see that for myself. I couldn't see it. My boss's boss had been working for this for this company for 17 years and was just barely making over that. So I, I was just there for five years. I couldn't, I couldn't see myself doing that. And he said, no, that's the minimum wage here. You need to allow yourself to think of it that way. What would you be doing? What would you be creating? Who else would you be adding to your team? Would you be creating another source of income? What would you be doing? What do you need to let go? What is the habit you have during the day that prevents you from creating the actions that will create, get, make you make more money? And it was like, this was too confronting. I needed to quit my job. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know I, I was like, I can't make it. I can't consider this on a serious basis. But the seed was left for me to consider that maybe my, my income is tied to my minimum standards, not my fullest potential. Yeah, and, and, and that saying what your fullest potential is, or even saying what your dream income is, is the beginning of uh, shattering the ceiling. So uh, as you think of it, and you're looking and you're checking and saying, am I saying my dream income or am I letting my minimum standards say something that I feel is safe. So you actually have to take that step. And there is another step to take, right? You know, Gio, uh, I've, I've had several jobs uh, growing up and these jobs were all inside of this conversation I'm seeing tied to my minimum standard, right? So my first job out of high school, I was a bus boy. And there was a minimum standard there. I just wanted enough money to be able to have some fun on the weekend. Minimum standard, you know, under three bucks an hour, minimum wage. I was good. And then I started looking around me and heard that the dishwashers made more money than the bus boys or that the short order cooks make more money. So I wanted to get more, but you know what, in that environment, when I said I wanted more, I didn't dream anything beyond what the environment could allow me to dream. So when I said I wanted more, I just wanted to make what the short order cult was making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went there and, uh, you know, that was 350 uh, an hour. And I was happy for a long time. And inside of the minimum standard, all of the conditions that came with making that money were acceptable to me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until something happened. I got really disgusted with the minimum standard. I got really disgusted with my accepting everything that comes with saying yes to the minimum standard. And I went someplace else. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to school. I'm going to get a degree. That way I can make more money. And what I'm discovering in the conversation, Giovanni, is that the minimum standard may go up, but at some point in time, the notion that it's always the minimum standard that's dictating the amount of money I make, I need someone or something beyond me to say what my dream income is. Because left to my own devices, I'm going to say something and For target a, an amount of money that's going to have me be comfortable in this moment at this stage of my life. So I'm throwing it back to you saying, you know what, Gio? I don't think that 
I get to say what my dream income is. Maybe yes. someone else gets to help me create that. That was so profound, Sorel. What we usually say about, what human beings usually say about how much their money should, they should make or they shouldn't make is usually correlated to the environment they're in. So just like just like you're pointing to, when I was a bass boy, my height, my 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 next level was being a cook. That was I'm going to make seven dollars an hour now. But that's all inside of the environment I'm in. You know, I couldn't say a hundred dollars an hour, two hundred dollars an hour, three hundred dollars an hour, a thousand dollars. Unimaginable, an hour. right? <laughs> Unimaginable because of the environment that we're in. Yeah. And there's a saying, and I really have seen it in, in my life. Until I get disgusted with where I am in a particular area of my life, it's very difficult to change something. So, so we, so I, I, I really relate to what you're saying. Until I started noticing this, this doesn't work for me anymore. But it wasn't that it was low. It was this doesn't work for me anymore. No. So how did I get my standards to elevate? So that's the last part of the uh, equation. And here's where we want to invite you for those of you that want to you know, increase your income. The way to, to increase in this context, in the context that we're in, the way, to, the way to increase your income is to allow yourself to surround yourself with people who are making 10,000, 15,000, 100,000 times more than you. And be okay feeling uncomfortable. I, I go to Jeff's house and he, you know, he owes you know, a, house, a couple of million dollars. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing here? And Jeff is not a, he's like the most welcoming human being, you know, but mm -hmm. being around him gets me to see his habits. His habits are incredible for a human being, right? Then I go to Sorrell's house and Sorrell's is like incredibly humble. He will never tell you, but you go to his house and you're waiting for somebody to open the door. Like, this is incredible. And it's like, oh my God, his basement is like uh, somebody's dream house, right? And I'm like, I got to do something with my life and you see Sorrel's habits they're incredible the way he speaks he's impeccable with his words I go to Mariela's house Mariela, I'm going to see her in a minute she lives by in this incredible area I mean it, it doesn't get much better than that and I'm like whoa it keeps continuing to elevate my standards elevate my standards elevate my standards and my significant others I'm just giving you my examples it's just allow yourself to be with people who have elevated their minimum standards. And then you, you can begin to see that they are not out of this world, that they're human beings, that they got their own issues, but they elevated the minimum standards, right? And for me, that, that's one of the things that have allowed me to make in one month what I used to make in two years or three years. But it was, it, the strategies never kicked in for me until I surrounded myself with people who were making two, three, four, five, ten times more than I was making in one month or in a year. That's why I want to and say you know, that. And, and what Gio's pointing to doesn't mean you diss your friends, you diss your no. family. It's not that. It's not that. It's literally uh, putting yourself in an environment and allowing that environment to create the next version of yourself when it comes to how much money you make. And you, so the community, the community you're part of will give you your minimum standards. Well, Gio, let's open it up for questions and comments. Absolutely. So go ahead and raise your hand if you have a comment, if you have a question. We love those comments, we love those questions. Go ahead, Andrea. Um, what triggered uh, my mind when you guys were speaking is this idea that you're the result of the five people you spend the, t the most time with uh, because it, it actually, you have the opportunity not only to learn from them, but also to teach them. So it's a, a combination of both. So I, I invited myself, like you were saying, being part of the community that you want to be or how you want to, to raise your standards, if that's your ideal, 
um, and only and also bring your standards to that community. So it's kind of a, a, a both way. Do you guys feel that is something uh, related to that? It, it, or is it just you see it so far as at this point, one way? It's it's totally related to that, Andrea. I'm, I'm fond of saying this, that I can only learn what I teach. So to be unwilling to teach is to be unwilling to learn. So it does go both ways. So by the time you go to an environment that makes you uncomfortable, you know, it, 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 it kind of goes like this, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. So whatever it is you soak in when you make yourself uncomfortable, you now have uh, the privilege to go be that environment for somebody else. Yeah. Not yeah. in a condescending, mm -hmm. not in a I'm better than you kind of way, but just in a different skin. Mm -hmm. And you're walking around comfortable in that different skin, having raised your minimum standards. And so, yeah, uh, I would say to teach is to learn. Yeah, and, and, and one of the teach. things, yeah, and, and, and that teaching mechanism, at least for me, in the way that I am raising my standards, is actually surrounding myself by people who are working less, because I want to work less, raise my prices, and it's not about the, the possessions right now, but that's where I am, so that's what I, it triggered my mind, because it is, it is, it is a both way, so thank you so much. Yeah, I Thank wanted you, to say something. I wanted to add to that. So, Earl and I do, uh, as you know, Andrea, we do masterminds, right? And um, in, in the current mastermind, we have about 28 people. And, and some, some people are, in their businesses are selling over, you know, 20 million, 30 million. So, there is this exchange in the ideas, right? And I want to raise my minimum standard as far as my income. And I'm not dissatisfied with my income, but I want to raise it, right? And so, uh, so I have this particular um, participant in the mastermind, I'm, I'm going to say my client. And, um, and as we were talking, I'm, I'm elevating his standards in this particular area, for sure. And, and, and he's grateful and he's generous, but he's also elevating my standard in another area. Exactly. He, you know, he tells me, Gio, you use too much of your money. Why are you using your money? <laughs> and so, he, he should, you know, Gio, your team is a little too small, Gio. Why don't you just like, and, uh, and of course he confronts me, but I see the size of his team. He definitely does not work any more than I do. And, and so I, it's, this hap it's this thing happening in both ways constantly. But I am clear about something. If my standards are not high, I'm not part of his 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 world because he can't. He doesn't have time to waste with people that soak his energy. So that's that's certainly something that happens. Uh, uh, when I invite, when I allow myself to surround myself with people, generating a lot, a lot more, or with their minimum standards are higher, I gotta keep up. I gotta keep up, otherwise they're. I'm going to be soaking them and, and they don't want that. There's a reason why they're there. Go ahead, Chase. Oh, so much to say. So much to say. Um, you know, <clears throat> what you just said triggers something in me too, because when you're with someone who's at a higher plane and they trigger you, sometimes it works the opposite way. Sometimes I'll be with someone and I'll be like, what's wrong? You can do that. Let's do it. And they'll be like, no, 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 I'm good. No, but all you have to do is this. Yeah, I know. I don't want to do that. And, and you're just trying to help them. And it backfired. It happens to me all the time. All the time. My friends know me. Don't ask me something because I'll tell you how to do it. Let's go do it. Let's go figure that out. You know, whatever. And it's also when you said putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation, like people are like, wow, look at that car. I wish I could drive that. Well, go test drive it. The guy doesn't know how much money you have in your pocket, the woman or the man. Go ride the Ferrari. Go ride the Lamborghini. Go whatever. Go in with a nice suit on or whatever and drive the car. We're not taught that. We're usually not taught that. We're usually taught to stay within our parameters. And when you have something that is a little over the top or you have a lifestyle that's over the top, you know, a lot of people are afraid to carve it down, right? And I remember Jay-Z was being interviewed by somebody and he said, what's your favorite snack as a kid? He goes, as a kid, I would love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It was awesome. And then when I got older, I realized, hmm, I don't really need the bread. I want to be a little more stealth. 
So now I just eat peanuts and raisins. And I was like, wow, I like that. So figuring out how to minimize things within the confines as well, but just taking better chances and really looking at stuff. Because you said something like, why do you spend your money like that? Mm -hmm. And in a month, if we really did a deep dive and I've done it like every day, right? What you spend, sometimes you're just mad at yourself. You're like, why did I buy? What is this? How did I spend $150 on XYZ, whatever? So it's really just monitoring everything and, and, and taking everything at a molecular level. And I just don't think most people want to take time to do that. You know, it's tricky. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. Well, Gio, thank you for dancing with me today. The time flew by and it's 930 already. Uh, if you were to say one more thing, Gio, in the context of raising one's minimum standard, reaching your dream income and having money to play the kinds of games that uh, Kimberly and Zach are inviting us to play on every Monday, what would you say, brother? I think something that made a profound difference in my life was when uh, I heard someone say to, to a group, but I wasn't part of the group. So he was saying it to me. He said, he said, Gio, the more money you make, the bigger the difference you can make. And that, that stayed with me. Yeah. And that person in my life is my wife. She's fond of saying, you know what? You want to make a difference in the world. You say that Haiti is a developed nation in your lifetime, and yet you want to wait on people to donate to the cause. Why don't you make enough money and fund the cause yourself? <laughs> the first time she said that to me, I was mad as hell. <laughs> but you know what? She was raising my standards. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the Daily Huddle. Grateful for you, Giovanni. And uh, grateful for Zach and Kimberly. Uh, my friends, I know you'll be watching this later. Uh, I'm immensely grateful for the difference that you make for our community on Monday. So thank you. Uh, we end the show today with our eight tenets, as we usually do. I'm inviting you to love. Um, you know, even when you don't feel loving, love is somewhere deep inside of you. Just reach down for it. And how you reach is by laughing out loud, stressing less, eating mostly plant-based. I mean, raisins and peanuts. That opens up your heart and makes you love others. It makes you love yourself. Sleep, give, give up everything you have. Move your body. Giovanni loves to say 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes before you go to bed at least 20 minutes a day. And last but not least, every single thing you see is a function of your perception of the world. So therefore, check your assumptions before you go down a rabbit hole. This is your show for today. We'll see you here bright and early with our good friend Chase Steele Gray tomorrow morning and every day. Until then. Have a great one, guys. Thanks.